Alright, so in this tutorial we're going to be covering um, a grasshopper definition that looks at making louvers. Um, and they're made parametrically. Um, so all we have to feed the definition is a surface, uh, a curve, which will affect the rotation of the louver, and a point, which will affect the, the depth of the louver. Um, so I've already made it, and I'm going to remake it talking you through each point. But uh, kind of there's not a whole lot to it, although there's a little bit of complication in this area here, which we'll figure out why we're doing what we're doing there. Um, so first thing first, I'm just going to jump down and start making it again. So we're going to be building these louvers off of a surface. So um, I'm going to be just using the input here, surface. Uh, we've talked about this in the past. Right-clicking that, setting one surface, and selecting my surface in Rhino. You can see it turns green because I've got that node selected. If I don't have it, it turns red, which just means that it's in Grasshopper. So I'll hide my surface. Uh, while I'm here, I'm going to bring in these other two pieces of geometry. So I'll get a curve. A black hexagon means it's an input. Right-click the set one curve. There's my curve. And also a point. Right-click, set one point, click my point. Now each of these pieces are in Grasshopper. All right, so th the next part is this, the surface. Uh, my surface is about 60 feet long and 15 feet tall. And what I want to do is to break up this surface into a series of uh, subsurfaces, essentially um, taking just a small piece of it. Now, I've talked at length in the past about uh, the do domains of uh, objects. So what we have here is a surface that has a 0, 0 point, and that's a UV, 0, 0, and it all ha also has a, a UV of 1, 1. And along the surface, there's a whole bunch of subdivisions. So if I were to say that I want a, a, a U of 0.1 and a 1, or a V of 0.1, that would give me this corner. And then I could build a rectangle on the surface that is specifying just that area of the surface. To do this, uh, I'm going to say domain. Um, I don't think I want that. I want su I'm going to type surface. Um, What's the best way to do this? I forget the command. I just well, that's why I built it up here. Let's check. Uh, so I need a subsurface, and I'm going to divide domain squared. So first thing is a divide uh, domain squared. So that you can divide a mo domain into sections. We want domain squared because it's a two-dimensional object. The the surface here. So our surface is the thing we're dividing, the I, and then we can put in sliders. So I'm going to say 11 copy and paste this, and each one of these goes into my U and my V. Um, my next part up here under Utilities, going to Surface, Utilities, uh, I'm going to be using Isotrim. Isotrim will take my surface and these new domains I've made here, and you can see uh, it creates these rectangles I was talking about. I'm going to unpreview my original surface here. So now I just have this. Um, what I want to do is to use the top line of each one of these rectangles as the base of my louver. And to do that, I'm going to have to explode each subsurface um, by deconstructing it and then taking the one edge. So here, I'll deconstruct, uh, and I'm going to deconstruct a B-rep. The surface goes into that, and now I actually have duplicates again, so I can hide this. Um, and now I have a series of faces, edges, and vertices. So if I just want the one edge, you can think about it this way. This four-sided um, surface here has one, two, three, four edges, and they're actually numbered zero, one, two, and three. If I use the command list item, item, there we go, I can plug all of my edges into here, and the I is set to zero. So what that's given me is it, it's given me the the zero edge here, the zero edge here, the zero edge here. So that's one, two, three, four uh, faces, and then one, two, three, four edges. Um, so now I can turn this off, and now you can see all I have are kind of curves uh, that come from the surface. Uh, our next step here is to make a midpoint on those curves. Essentially we don't want to uh, sample the entire curve. We're going we're gonna to rationalize it a little bit by just using a midpoint. 
So I'll use the command uh, curve on, po or sorry, point on curve. And when I plug this in, this will let me slide from uh, the zero of the domain of the curve all the way to the one side. I'm just going to keep it at 0.5, which is the midpoint. Um, now to get into the stuff that's a little more complicated. If I go back to the beginning, I'm going to preview this surface. What we have here is a point that's on a curve, and that curve is on the surface. Um, what we want to do is to figure out the normal to that surface. Um, the normal is the perpendicular vector. And what we can do with that is then extrude these mullions along that perpendicular vector. The trick with this is, is that point uh, isn't necessarily on this surface, right? The grasshopper doesn't understand that point lives on the surface. So if I type surface closest point, let's see, surface closest point here, I can say, well, I want to pull these points that go into the P onto this surface. What's nice about that now is that the, the points here are, are essentially identical, but they also give me a UV point for all of those midpoints. And that's great because if I evaluate surface here using evaluate surface, I can say uh, this surface evaluated at these points, I get a series of uh, planes, these grids, and, and the Z of this plane is the normal here, the normal. Uh, and that's good because that's the way we want to uh, offset or the amount of extrusion we want to come normal to those curves. So I'm going to unpreview, I'm going to just take all this stuff, we'll keep the surface planes there. Um, all this stuff, preview off. Um, my plane size is very large, so if I go to display, preview plane size, I can change it maybe to 0.5. Keep it something that's smaller and reasonable. All right, our next step. We're not using the curve just yet, but we're going to use the point. And we're going to measure the distance between um, essentially these points, our midpoints. We're going to measure between our midpoints and uh, our, our attractor point here. So take that, and this will spit out uh, a number of values. I think, um, well, I'm certain that we don't want that the the, the distance from this point to that point to be the extrusion. So I'm going to say division and I'm also going to use a slider and say about 30. I'm going to use 30 as my numerator and my distance as the denominator. And what that means is that the louvers that are further away from the point will be reduced, they'll be shorter. But the louvers close to the point will be deep. Next thing I have to do is just to say extrude it says, what do you want to extrude? Well, I'm going to extrude these lines, the lines that we unpreviewed, these lines here. The I goes into my B. And then it says, well, what direction do you want? Well, we know we want them normal to the surface. But we're going to use the amplitude to use our distance as the, the, uh, the amplitude. So basically, we're going to say, OK, we're going to go normal to the surface. This amount, that force, and then this plugs into our, our direction. So here you can see um, closer to the point they extrude further. And if I increase my numerator they're going to get larger. If I increase my denominator they're going to get smaller but they'll always go um, you know taper away. So I think that looks pretty good. I can also pull the point away and I'll get something a little more normal. So maybe I want to increase these a little bit. We'll do something like that for right now. So there's our extrusion. Our next part is that you know these louvers are fine. Um, you know if we're really you know doing this project and we're worried about the sun shading, I'm going to pre unpre I'm unpreviewing everything here. Take all this stuff, preview off. Um, if we're doing this for sun shading, the, these would do a good job. Uh, horizontal louver is is pretty nice. But I also think that we can design these a, a little bit better and, and be very dynamic with them. So I'm going to rotate them based on this attractor curve. So what I'll do here is I'll say uh, closest 
what's it? Closest point. Curve closest point is the command we want. And what this does is it looks from all of our midpoints and it finds the closest point on our curve. You can see now we have all those green. And what that does, if I preview our, our midpoint here, it says, well, the closest point to this is there. The closest point to this is there. And then, um, then what we can do with that is to find an angle. So let's say angle. And what this component wants, let's see if we hover over it, it says compute the angle between two vectors. Well, our vectors we're going to use are the, the normal, which we already have, and then we're going to use a vector that goes between this point and that point. So if I type vector to point, we'll go from our midpoint to our curve closest point, that's our new, our new vector, and it gives us an angle. Our final step is rotating the louvers. So if I say rotate, uh, and I'm going to use 3D, rotate 3D. What this lets me do is say, okay, I'm going to rotate my geometry, that's my louver. I'm going to rotate it an angle in radians. I have my angle here. It's going to ask me what's the center of my rotation. We can use our, our existing middle points right here. And then it says, well, what is your axis of rotation? Our axis of rotation is going to be based off of these planes. Um, sorry, that's our evaluate surface. There's our normals. Wait, yeah, that's right, right? There we go, yeah. So we have a Z here, and then we also have a Y that goes up and down, and an X. The red line is the X, there's the Y, and the Z is invisible. So we want to rotate our louvers about that X. So if I deconstruct, um, where's deconstruct? Deconstruct plane, I can take that, and then I'll use my X vector out of that plane. All right, so to pull that all together, I'm rotating my extrusions, I'm rotating them uh, this angle, I'm rotating them about this center point, and on this x-axis. Mm, something got off. Let's try the y-axis. No, that's not right either. Um, so that I think what's happening here, mm, let's see, it's rotating about that center point. Center rotation's fine, there's the angle. Well, we definitely don't want Z. It's mostly working, but we're getting these strange up and down. Let me check again what I did up here. I might need this division, which will reduce it. Um, curve closest point. There's my vector, there's my angle. Ah, all right. So I forgot this one step. Coming back here, we have our our, our uh, planes, evaluate surface, and then I'm going to say uh, plane normal, and I'm going to create planes again. So we, we, we have these planes here, but th those are mapped on the surface. Let's see if this works. I think this is kind of redundant. Plane normal says, well, where's my plane start and which way is Z? That's the normal there. So I'll deconstruct this new plane and there we go. We eliminate a piece of the information um, so that we're, we're working only with um, X relative to that surface. So if you see, let's you know, unpreview all this stuff, you can see that our planes have rotated and if I turn points on my curve, as I move my control points on my curve, I control my louvers. Now, this doesn't look all that you know, impressive right now, but if I increase my density to say something like 35 by 35 divisions, um, and then let's hide this surface, you can see that I have uh, control over how those louvers operate. Which, and then I'm gonna actually keep that at the very end, take all of this stuff, unpreview it, and let's also do this. Um, our rotation angle here, I'm going to divide uh, by division, and then I'm going to say uh, 0 0.001, and I'm going to set this slider, our value for the slider is 0 0.001 to 1.0. 
And when I plug this in and my angle in, I'm going to reduce the amount of rotation each of these things get. So this, this is going to replace the A in my rotation. That's a lot. So we have to move this thing up. And you can see we can get wild deflections. Like it becomes like super almost hairy. Um, there we go. You know, 35 actually looks a little too dense for me. I'm going to drop it down just a little bit. 30 by 30 louvers. So now, let's see, points on. I can manipulate my curve and change uh, my surface. I can also move my uh, attractor point, so I'm using an attractor curve and an attractor point, to change where these things extrude the most. I can come back and say that I want them to extrude a lot or just a little. And I get these kind of uh, facade registrations that maybe I could say, you know, we have a, a private element here and here, but along this kind of staircase, I want the louvers to be thinner. I can also evaluate this stuff for uh, thermal performance and, and, and uh, light transmissions. If I say show, I can take my um, my original surface here and I can update it, say points on. Um, and I could remap my surface. Let's say I want my surface to be further away over there. On all the louvers snap and update. Let's see, maybe I want these to go up. I can pull my curve closer and see if I get, uh, if it goes through, I'll get some wild deflections. And then I'll, I'm gonna just going to hide my surface again so you can see. And I'll increase my louver size. And there you have it. We have one part that's kind of finicky here. I suppose it's inside out in some way. I'm not really sure why that's happening, but uh, this is the system. If you have any questions, go ahead and email me at c.k.mcadams at gmail.com. I hope this helps.